This is the day-to-day -day life of a volunteer doctor in the Philippines. You may find it interesting, you may find it shocking, but I hope it inspires you to undertake something similar, doctor or not. So we've now been here for roughly two weeks in Tacloban City, which is in Leyte in the Philippines. Now we're living in the city, but we're actually visiting very remote rural villages, usually about an hour to two hours out of the city. The mosquitoes here are killing me. That's why I have to carry this around all the time. <laughs> okay, so before we go into the day to day, I want to give you a little bit of background, take you around where we're staying and what kind of conditions we're living in. So all the volunteers here are kindly put up by local homestays and we've been taken in by a lovely local family who've actually been hosting for 17 years. So for 17 years they have been having volunteers from all around the world. So we're staying with a small family, basically a mum, a dad and a niece. And it's very modest and basic surroundings. So walking around the houses, they're not very built up. They're made a mixture of concrete and tin roofs and a lot of the places are almost outdoors it's not really sealed from outside and our family they have a general store in the front of the house where they just sell bits and bobs to the local community and we can go in through the front gate and then through the general store and then into the front room through the front room we have the kind of dining area and there's two bedrooms now the bedroom on the left is the one we're sleeping in and the bedroom on the right is where we are leaving our luggage now you may be wondering why the pillows are at the wrong end of the bed and that's because we want it to be close to the fan. There's obviously no AC so we just had the fan continuously blowing us and we're just ever so slightly closer when we sleep down that side of the bed. If my fiance Joe and I are staying in the bedrooms, where do the family sleep? It turns out they sleep in the front room. So all three of them, the uncle, aunt and niece, they all sleep in the front room which is crazy apparently they've been doing it for 17 years which to be honest completely shocked me uh, just the kind of generosity and I found it so humbling and the place has electricity and it has running water very slow running water so rather than having a shower we fill up these two large buckets because the taps drip so slowly you, there's not really any water pressure to have a shower so we fill up these two large buckets and we use it for manually flushing and also for pouring water on our head on our head and bathing ourselves. And interestingly, the uncle raises chickens in the backyard. He raises them for cockfighting. So apparently it's the national sport in the Philippines where they watch chickens fight each other. Anyway, let's move on and start our day of volunteering. So like I said, we're staying in the city, but the clinics are all roughly about an hour drive out of the city. Only previous volunteers have had to take two buses and it usually takes about two hours to get to these clinics. But because Joe and I have a bit of experience riding a motorbike or scooter around Asia, we decided to rent one. And that's cut our journey down to about an hour. Now the first half of the drive is horrific. We're driving out of the city and it's so busy. I'm just constantly weaving through traffic. I'm constantly beeping my horn. The second half of the journey is beautiful. We're just going through all these scenic landscapes, uh, these really quiet roads, tall mountains, so much greenery. And they basically have a main clinic where they do all their consultations. And there's one doctor there who, she's pretty much the only doctor in the whole area. And she's been super welcoming, um, super helpful, and really giving us a good insight into medicine here. The clinic offers a few different things. So firstly, there's a lot of midwives there, so they do prenatal checks. Prenatal checks are actually very good here. They have an animal bite treatment center, and then they just have a general clinic, which I'm helping in. And obviously there's a language barrier, so there's a nurse who interprets for me. Thankfully in the Philippines, all the medical professionals can speak English usually, so I'll take a history with the nurse interpreting, and she'll translate back to me and translate to the patient as well. Now, of course, it's been very challenging, not only with the language barrier, but I just don't really have a clue what they have available here. So if I'm prescribing things, I need to double check with the doctor if it's actually suitable, if they actually have the thing, if they actually have the medicines that I'm prescribing. And also sometimes they just use things that I've never used before. For example, they have a herbal medicine here called Lagundi, which is like a leaf which they use for cough, which we would just never use in the West, but it's very popular here. And in fact, I've tried it myself because I've been, I've been a bit sick this week and it's pretty effective for, for treating cough. Um, kind of works like a mucolytic agent, so thins the mucus and help, helps you get your mucus up. The first couple of days I was working there, I can run everything by the doctor who works there, which is obviously super comforting to me because, because of the, all these difficulties. My missus, she's not a doctor, she's a scientist. 
So she's been kind of helping out in the lab, learning how they take samples here. And there's a few things they can test like TB, they can do microscopy, they can check urine. And when she's not helping in the lab, she's usually just helping me, giving me a bit of moral support, I guess. One of the big events they throw is called uh, their fiesta. The fiesta is essentially a big community gathering, which is organized by the local government. And not only do they give out free agricultural stuff, free food, free haircuts, they also give out free medical consults. And it's basically a way of getting these rural villagers who don't really present to healthcare to just seek professional help. And they kind of dress it up in like a fun, exciting way. So people are more likely to see their doctor uh, if there's music playing, if there's MCs at the front. Otherwise, they just would never go see their doctor. Now, the, the Fiesta events come with their own challenges. So this one, for some reason, the Filipinos, they like to blast everything on loudspeakers. So they've got mics and they've got these huge speakers. And the two MCs at the front, they're kind of getting the crowd excited, the crowd hyped. The speakers are turned so loud that my watch actually uh, was warning me, saying the noise levels have reached 95 decibels. Please move to a quieter area. And this happened four times in the space of like two hours. And of course, there's not only the loud speakers, so I can't hear the patients. There's also the language barrier and we're trying to work through in a a nurse interpreting so it, that makes it extra difficult and it's 30 plus degrees you're wearing like full scrubs so it's a challenging day thankfully the other doctor was there so again i was kind of seeing patients alongside her it's mostly very routine stuff all these villagers are just lining up i've actually got a clip here of about 20 patients lining up to see me very much primary care gp pre-hospital stuff but there's the occasional patient who actually could potentially be quite sick so for example we had a 63 year old lady who had um, a background of diabetes and high blood pressure. Hadn't been on medications for three months because she couldn't afford the medication. Now she had come to see me with um, dizziness and vomiting. Now of course I've got alarm bells all going off in my head. Um, a diabetic who hasn't been on medication for three months. What's her glucose? So I asked them to check her glucose and unfortunately they don't have a glucometer which if we were in a more developed country, that would be the first thing we do is check the patient's glucose. But the other doctor, obviously more experienced, she's been working here for 20 plus years, basically said, we just do what we can. We give them what we can um, because the alternative is they don't even go to see a doctor anyway. So yeah, I'm just being guided by her experience really. I know that if it were in Australia, for example, that patient would probably be seen in the emergency department, have bloods, have uh, an ECG, all these investigations. She'd definitely at least have her glucose checked, but we, I guess we just have to work with what we've got here. It was a slightly stressful event, but it was so wonderful being there. We felt so welcome. I think the MCs probably thanked us about five times throughout the course of the day. And we also got to meet the mayor. She took some photos with us. And yeah, it was just a, a generally nice day. I want to tell you about another interesting event that is part of the Filipino culture and that is Circumcision Day. So they call it Operation Tuli, and it's something that happens once a year or so where all the boys aged nine to 12 get circumcised, which of course, yeah, is pretty shocking to us, but in their culture, it's very accepted, it's very normalized. Uh, and in fact, the boys look forward to it because it's almost like a rite of passage where they graduate from being boys into manhood. And so we turn up at this village, kind of town hall, outdoor gym area, and they've got all these tables lined up I think there's about six or seven just wooden tables with young boys sitting next to them. And they do all the circumcisions under local anesthetic. They've got about six or seven kids just lined up, all being done at the same time. And yeah, it was kind of quite a gruesome experience, but after about an hour or two, you, can't, you get used to it and accept what's going on. And I think that day they probably did about 50 circumcisions on these boys. And in fact, they even asked me if I wanted to do one. And I politely declined um just saying no thank you i don't really want to do a circumcision yeah i pass on that one but yeah apart from that something slightly embarrassing happened at the circumcision event so there's a lady in the corner who's doing circumcisions and i recognize her because she's the mayor that we had met the previous week at the fiesta event and i was quite surprised i was like ah oh, the mayor does circumcisions that's pretty cool so i go over to her and i say ah, w were you previously medically trained? Uh, do mares usually do circumcisions? And she kind of looked at me confused, like, what's this guy asking me? And she was like, yes, uh, I'm a midwife. And I was like, she does a couple more circumcisions and I ask again, is it normal for mares to do circumcisions? And she, again, didn't really understand what I was saying. And I said, is it normal for politicians to do circumcisions here? 
And yeah, again, wasn't really understanding what I was asking, despite her being able to speak perfectly good English. And yeah, I spent pretty much the whole day with her watching her do circumcisions, along with all these other medical stuff. At the end of the day, when it was all finished, we were just about to get some food. We had a little interaction and she just burst out laughing. And then I had a massive realization that actually she wasn't the mayor. She was a midwife she'd, we had been working with the previous day. They just looked super similar and I'd got them confused. So I completely understood why she was so confused about me asking all these questions about the mayor and, and if they do circumcisions or not. I probably came off quite strange, but that's fine. And yeah, that's pretty much the circumcision event. Again, it sounds really messed up to us, but for the Filipinos, it's so normal in their culture. The boys actually kind of look forward to it. I remember seeing a kid jump off the circumcision table, massive grin on his face, and he turned, he turned and looked at me and gave me a big thumbs up. So I don't think it's as traumatizing as we think it is. And in fact, the boys want to get it done because they'll get bullied by the other kids at school if they're not circumcised. And apart from circumcisions, of course, we're doing other healthcare visits to some even more remote communities. Just yesterday, actually, we went to such a remote community that they're on a little island. And the only way to get there is by a boat. So we hop in this boat with one of the nurses who's taken us around and they take us to a clinic there. And of course, all the village get quite excited when a, a doctor, especially a foreign doctor, arrives because doctors don't really visit the island. It's, they only have a nurse there. So yeah, obviously the town gets quite excited when a doctor actually comes through, which meant that there was word going around that I was here, so they all lined up to see me. And yeah, we saw quite a few patients in a short amount of time. And I have to say it was pretty stressful because this time I was actually on my own. There was no other doctor for me to bounce off ideas. And in fact, I couldn't even use my phone to Google anything. There's no service and there's no Wi-Fi. So one thing I was really struggling with was pediatric doses. There was there was no one super sick or anything, but if I wanted to prescribe some antibiotics, for, for example, back home, I'd just go on my phone and look up the, the dose as per their weight. But because I couldn't look it up, I kind of just had to guess. I didn't guess because we, we found out later that there was a little box on the island that you put some pesos in and you get free Wi-Fi. So I sent my fiance to go get some Wi-Fi and check the pediatric doses just for some basic medicines. And yeah, after seeing a load of patients in the clinic, we did some home visits of some more sick patients who couldn't make it to the clinic. And again, it's just me and a couple of other nurses. Thankfully, no one was too sick and I felt like I could help a little. The alternative is, again, they just don't present to healthcare. They don't see a doctor. So even though sometimes I feel a little bit out of my depth, I can at least try and help a little bit, which is reassuring to me and hopefully to them too. I just want to say this is probably one of the most memorable experiences of my entire life and I haven't even finished the work here yet. It probably sounds super cliche but really a huge takeaway is it really makes you appreciate what you take for granted back home. Just stuff like running water, basic medicine or even a pair of gloves to examine a patient. A lot of these rural communities literally have nothing. But one thing that I have noticed is that despite having nothing it almost seems like they have everything. All the Filipino people I've met they just seem so happy. In fact, one of the midwives who we were working with the other day, she said this to me, which I'll always remember. Sometimes they have no food to eat, but they're still laughing. And I've been trying to work out why, why is that? Why are they so much happier? Or why do they seem so much happier than us back in these more developed countries? I think it's most likely due to community. So they really have a family oriented way of living. They live in housing, which is so close together that there's just always someone there. There's always a friend around the corner. There's always kids playing with each other on the street or on the basketball court. When they have lunch at the clinic, they all eat together. They cook a meal and eat together. And despite having what we would consider nothing, in some way they have a lot more than us because there's always people around. And it's really hard to be sad or depressed or miserable when you've just got someone in your face all the time. So I hope that's something I can take home with me and continue to remind myself when I'm back in a more developed country. Try and have people around you and don't take your luxuries for granted. I hope you enjoyed that video. I'm really enjoying my experience here. I'll probably have more stories to share. This has been Behind the Scenes Weekly, episode 10. I'll see you next week. Keep training, keep living, peace.